There is nothing, truly nothing that can't be solved within. So listen to me, never, never, never give up. Go on and give in, give in to the higher truth. Give in, give in to the heart of you.
and on Facebook or Zoom. We absolutely appreciate and love the fact that you've taken time out of your day and blessed us with your presence. For those of us that are here live, please make sure your cell phones are silenced so that we may enjoy this time together. We're going to begin this evening service with a 10-minute chant. We're just going to kind of lull ourselves into some lovely music. And you may choose to repeat your favorite mantra. Uh, simply, I breathe in, I breathe out. God is the love that I am. I am the love that God is. I am peace. I am joy. Whatever speaks to your heart. If your mind wanders, as they sometimes do, just simply become aware of it and lovingly bring it back to your breath.
And welcome to those of us who have joined us um, virtually or in person during our meditation. We are so glad you're here. And for those in person, please just make sure your cell phones are turned to silent so we may enjoy this uh, service without interruption. Let's begin with our opening song, God is in this place and God is, thank you for singing for us tonight, Miss Margaret. Margaret and Sam for that, and indeed God is in this place. And let us turn together in prayer, and just feeling that loving presence of God that is in this place, that is in my heart, that is absolutely perfectly comfortable at home. Let us all recognize that God part of ourselves, which is all of ourselves, that God is in, through, and as us, and just cuddle up and get cozy with that, and just absolutely know that we are here as divine emanations of God. There's no separation. There's absolutely nothing but unconditional love that is sent to us from God. And imbue, imbibe, just really absorb that and allow it just to trickle through every nook and cranny into the most um, deepest recesses of our mind, our soul, and our body. And just breathe it in and allow it to circulate and feel that loving presence and know that you are that loving presence, that God is love, God is divinity itself, expressing in, through, and as each and every person here. And I claim this for myself and I claim this for each and every person, knowing it is true for me and it is true for you, it is true for all of us. And I am so grateful for Sam and Margaret for their beautiful musical tunes that are here with us tonight. I am so grateful for Reverend Sidney and the practitioners who care for our souls. I am grateful for those who care for our children and those who care for the ground and those who are bored, who makes wonderful decisions that has kept us afloat and keep us going. I am truly grateful and is with just love and gratitude. I say, thank you, God. I let it go. I release this prayer into the universal law of mind. And so it is. And together we simply say, Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Tell it to your mama if you really gotta talk about it, talking about it. 
that's not the answer every time you hold the voice of spirit but you're never gonna hear it if you're caught up in the drama on some other line the key may be in listening to find your way again so listen to me never 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 give up but go on and give in give in to the peace give in to the silence go in truth you ever heard about letting go the strength within you is profound go on lay your burden down silence is golden let your good fortune abound there is nothing truly nothing that can't be solved within so listen to me never 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 give up but go on and give in give in to the peace give in to the silence go Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. Pause for the cause, please. It's a hot day, you have to hydrate, right? Okay. I missed you all. I was gone last week. I was on a plane going to the middle of the country for a, re, um, not so much a retreat as a conference, and it was powerful and wonderful. I'm so glad that I was able to be a part of it. It was. Um, called Celebrating Our Soul, and it was produced by people of African descent, New Thought Group. And so it was primarily black people from Unity, Religious Science, CSL, Divine Science, throughout, and about 400 people, and I think 20 or 30 of us were not of African descent, and I was so glad to be there. I got to be of service, I got to support, and. To, to help with all sorts of things. And I just, I, I loved it. And I, I came away with this powerful sense of, of unity and community, with unity, come unity, community, and, and inspiration. And it was, it was so perfect, too, because as I flew out sat, um, Wednesday morning, I knew I needed to get there early since I was volunteering for so many things. So I flew out from Burbank, to easy flight, it was perfect. Oh, I did forget my phone in my husband's car. And he saw it and God bless him, turned around and as I'm trying to call him from one of the baggage handlers, <laughs> phones, but he brought it, it all works out, everything works out. Um, Flights were on time, they were easy, I got my luggage, everything was excellent, and I thought, this is so great. I just know that I am in alignment with God, it's so perfect, it's so easy, and then the conference was perfect, it was easy, and I made new friends and just expanded my whole awareness of spirituality and family, and then I knew I was going to be flying out at about, let me see, 3 o'clock, 
two o'clock, two o'clock from Kansas City, um, and then with a quick connection in Las Vegas and then land back at Burbank at about 7.30, and it was just, you know, what a wonderful, wonderful way to be able to know that that's how this will work, except that that's not how that worked. <laughs> Got to the airport, one of my girlfriends who lives in Kansas City took me and dropped me off, and it was then that as I went up to the gate and a woman said, well, we, we emailed you, didn't you see? We have you scheduled for tomorrow's flight because today's was late and you won't make your connection in Las Vegas. So and I went, um, huh, that's adorable. <laughs> it's literally what I said. And I, I said, so are there provisions for a hotel or... And I started exploring, okay, there are possibilities here. I'm not going to be limited or, or defined by this situation. I refuse to be defined by this. And, and then I found out that I could take um, a flight that night, seven hours later, and um, land at LAX, a direct flight. I thought, well, that's good, you know, just seven hours to spend in Kansas City. International Airport. If you've ever been there, there's nothing to do. And on a Sunday, everything is closed. Everything is closed. But I spent my seven hours, a lot of quality time on Facebook and Amazon, so that was good. Um, and the airline itself, now the people were fabulous, just so giving and courteous, and they upgraded me to a better seat and the whole thing. But I need you to know, um, and, and at the risk of like causing trouble, I won't actually say the name of the airline, but it rhymes with um, cheer it or fear it or hear it. You see where I'm going, right? So these seats, if you are, how do I describe this? If you were made from, from plastic and didn't need to bend, remember the old Barbie dolls that didn't bend? You'd be fine, but because these they don't go back. They don't go back, they don't, my legs start up here. So um, three hours later, I un, unwound myself and got off the plane, and I thought, well, that's really interesting. Um, how does that affect me? What is going on here? Is What's in my consciousness? I thought, well, I have the consciousness to have a, 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 an easy flight. It just wasn't that comfortable. But it all worked out, it all worked out beautifully because I, I've been chewing on this topic for a couple of weeks. I always do my topics way early. And, and the one that I had chosen for tonight was who's in charge here? Who's in charge here? And initially I thought that this talk would be all about are we allowing ourselves to be swayed and taken out by the stuff that happens in life or, and defined by it, or are we remembering that we are divine and beautiful creatures of God? Are we remembering that? But what it actually comes down to is who's in charge here? Who's in charge here? Not in charge of fear it, cheer it, hear it, whatever, airlines, but who's in charge of, at, at Planet Sydney, right? Who's in charge here? And I thought, well, that's really exactly what we all need to remember. We have to be asking ourselves that all the time. At least I have to be asking myself. You know, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote that the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. So are we going to be a person, are, are you going to be the person who decides that all that stuff takes you off your center and makes you forget that you're a divine creation of spirit and that you are fully connected to God? Is that what's going to happen? Or are you going to choose to know yourself as God knows you, as spirit knows you? You know, what we teach and what we know and what we talk about a lot here is the idea that God is all there is. God is all there is. And we often have the experiences where we go, well, God is all there is except for this little space over here where I have to sit for three hours and I can't bend and there's, you know, <laughs> and I have, to, and I, and of course I'd bought food to carry on because they don't serve food and I couldn't bend down to pick up the food because there's no room to bend down to pick. So now I'm like kicking off my shoes and trying to grab the bag with my toes and then I can't get it all the way up to get to my hand. It was adorable. But... <laughs>
The stuff of life has a potential to take us out. It has the potential to take us out and cause us to forget our divinity and our connection with the infinite. But when we lean into our divine natures, especially in the chaos, and when we align with the idea that that which is, which is within me is greater than that which is in within, within the world, then we get to transcend that which is happening to us and still have an experience of possibility, of knowing, of love, of, of creativity, right? Except the thing is, the stuff out there is so attractive. You know, it's very seductive. I am such a, a, um, a Labrador retriever. I can be going along and suddenly shiny, and I am so distracted away from the truth of who I am, and, and I will run with it. You know, I, I am like that dog. I'm going to go chasing after it because it's so easy to do. Um, I'm really good at reminding myself that God is all there is, but I am really good at going shiny, and then I'm gone. So Richard Rohr is a writer that I like a lot, and he wrote this, life is characterized much more by exception and disorder than by total or perfect order. Ah, crap. <laughs> right? It's characterized more by the chaos. It's characterized more by the chaos. And one of the other things that he wrote about that is that he said the most amazing fact about Jesus, unlike almost any other religious founder, is that he found God in the disorder and imperfection and told us that we must do the same or we would never be content on this earth. So it comes down to this thing, once again, of who's in charge here? Who's in charge here? You know, the basic principle that we teach is that there's, it's a spiritual truth, it's a verity as we would call it. And the truth is that the mind of each individual may be consciously unified with the divine mind, the greater mind, through the indwelling Christ. Now understand that that indwelling Christ, indwelling Christ represents the divine nature that we already are. You know, there are many religions that never differentiate that and the people who perhaps attend those churches or those whatever, those, those centers, might still believe that Christ was Jesus' last name. It's not, because the Christ was in the world long before Jesus walked the planet. The Christ is that nature. It is the spirit. It is that power and presence of God. And when we affirm our at one our atonement, coming back to that, with God mind, we eventually realize that same perfect mind which was in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, the atone, the teacher. So remember that we are looking at this as Jesus, what Jesus represents. Ah, the Christ mind represents the inspiration and the power and the presence that is within us. Jesus symbolizes that mind in the body, right? So I am Jesus wearing orange. I am planet Sydney with my Christ mind within. I am the actualized experience of that presence. Does that make sense? Yeah? We still awake? Good. Okay. Christ is the divine man. Jesus is the name that represents an individual expression of the Christ idea. Christ existed long before Jesus. It was the Christ mind in Jesus that exclaimed, and now, Father, glorify thou me. In other words, okay, presence, okay, founding source idea, glorify me. Shine through as me. Express through me. I am a channel. I am a conduit. I am open and receptive. I'm here to be awesome. I'm here to be a celebration of spirit. We don't often hear that, right? But Christ abides in each person as his and her or her potential perfection. Jesus, the Christ, was the embodiment of all divine ideas and represents the living principle expressing through you and as me. So this idea that God is all there is is really great in theory, right? But then when you're, you're in a, a plane 30,000 feet up in the air and you're wedged in there with all of the other sardines and you can't move or bend your leg or, or unbend your legs, you know, there's... There is that part that says God is all there is except for seat 4F because it's just really not happening here. God is not all there is. <laughs> so we get to remind ourselves that God is omnipresent, everywhere equally present, 
omnipotent, it is all power. We connect with that aura, as Wayne Dyer taught uh, intention. We connect with that power, that presence, which is pure intention. All it wants to do is come through us. That's it. That's it. That's its job. And omniscient means pure knowing, pure intelligence. So whether you call this power and presence God, Yahweh, Emmanuel, Allah, Buddha, Great Spirit, or Fred, it just is. It is here. And so we get to choose, are we going to uh, utilize that? You know, we all have that capacity. And it's more than capacity. We have that assignment to use that power in presence. So my goal tonight is to bring this big idea of God, which, again, many of you might be in recovery from, depending on how God was presented to you when you were growing up, into a place of imminence and immediacy. In other words, right here and now right here and now. You know, I want to empower all of us to identify as authorized by God to direct our own thinking and therefore our experience. Who's in charge here? And again, as I sat on that plane, I thought, who's in charge here? Who thinks that this is a good idea? <laughs> Whoever created an airplane where you can't move your seat back and you can't, you can't bend, you can't reach. Whose idea was it? Are they new? Are they, did they, did they, did the people who create this never fly before? And it was just fascinating to watch my own mind do this dance over here and then come back to my lane. Just come back to my lane and okay, go, well, God is here. I am fine. I have everything I need. And all of these people are doing their best to, ex to express God, whether they know it or not. Ernest Holmes, who founded this teaching, wrote, to understand our unity with God is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, my God to understand our unity with God. That's the beginning of wisdom, to understand it. So if we can practice that, and if we can drill down over and over and over until it actually sinks from here down to here, you know, that's the longest 18, that's, that's the longest distance known to man, right? The 18 inches from our heads to our, to our gut, to our heart, you know, to our thinking center, our spiritual loving center, if we can get it to go from this intellectual understanding into this place of I am as God created me and the light and the love and the glory. I am as God created me and the light and the love and the glory. I am as God, God created me or Yahweh or Emmanuel or Fred. I am as that presence created me. Perfect, perfect. Now, yes, the chaos is absolutely going to be there because Life is out here, right? We experience it through our, Charles Fillmore would call it, our sense perceptions. And it's really easy for me to get addicted to my sense perceptions and start judging according to everything I'm seeing, everything I'm experiencing, and whether or not I can bend my legs on a plane. I know I'm just not going to leave this one, am I? You know, we don't just want to acknowledge a power and presence if we really want to live these lives of joy and mastery. We need to bring God home and understand our unity with it. So if you haven't tried this idea on before, try it now. God is an inner power and presence that is our true nature, and we are inseparable from the divine. Inseparable. Where would you go? You can't even. I mean, even if you wanted to get away from this presence and your divinity, you can't. You can deny it and forget it, but it's still at residence within all of us. And it's not a radical or a heretical idea. Yet you might think it is because our world really does like to focus on separation and a God out there or up here or another entity that is seeking to destroy us. <sighs> Yet the teacher, Jesus, taught that the kingdom of God is within. In fact, again, Richard Rohr said he didn't, Jesus didn't come to change the mind of God about humanity. Jesus came to change the mind of humanity about God. Change the, our minds about God. So we want a God that is user-friendly, that is there for us, that is empowering us, that is guiding, that is always expressing and seeking to express in wholeness and healing and abundant life. That is the God. That is the truth. That is what Jesus came to, to expand our understanding about. And every 
great teacher has said the same thing in a different language. If you read any of the wisdom texts from the Baha'i teaching, you're going to find the same thing. And if you read any of the, the teachings and really understand them metaphysically in the Old Testament, which is the, the foundation of the Jewish faith, you're going to find the same thing that we are not alone and that which is within us is greater, 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 greater than all of this stuff out here. You are not a body with a soul. You are a soul with a body, right? So I am a soul with a body. I am Planet Sydney in this body. And who's in charge? Here. Who's in charge here? Who's in charge here? I am in charge here. I am in charge of my thinking and my decisions and my willingness to embrace a greater idea about myself and about the people around me. And why does this matter? In fact, why do all of these new thought centers and spiritual teachings and passive awakenings and enlightenment, enlightenment focus so much of our knowing ourselves as divine beings? And let me repeat, because to understand our unity with God is the beginning of wisdom to understand our unity with, and I'm going to say, as God is the beginning of wisdom. When we know, we reveal. When we reveal, we heal. When we heal, we transcend, not just for ourselves, but for all beings everywhere, right? When we know who and what we are, we get to celebrate in the here and now. And this is not a greater later teaching pie in the sky. If you do everything really, really well and you build up your karma points, then when it comes time for that final dirt nap, you're going to get all the glory. That's not what this is about. We teach a transcendent experience right here and right now because we are here for more. We are here for more. We are here as God's celebration of itself. Now, if you have not ever heard that, I want you to know, know that we are here for joy. We are here for joy. You know, Talard de Chardin, and I, you know, if Mark LaPonce were here, he'd probably slap me for butchering the French language. But what he wrote is joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. Joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. Now, there are those times that we are not in a place of joy. And we may wonder, is God still present? Absolutely. Absolutely because we can still bring ourselves back through our practice, through our study, and through our remembering to remember, to remember, to remember that at the core of our being, the ground of our being, is that soul, that perfect expression of God, that which is, which is changeless, cannot be hurt, cannot be damaged, cannot be taken away, but can only be grown and expanded in our awareness of it, and therefore our lives expanding, right? Okay. Heaven on earth is the here and now. Here and now. But if we aren't living from that awareness, then it's not going to seem like that. It's going to seem anything else. It's going to seem like it's, it is not heaven here and now. But I know that we are here to create wildly and passionately in joy and juicy delight. God wants us to party. You know, this... This power and presence created us not so that we could be stoic and build our temples of worship, but God created giraffes. Giraffes are whimsical. God created flamingos. Have you seen my earrings? This is whimsy. This is joy. And, and it's not in any way to diminish the challenges that we seek. Or, sorry, the challenges that we experience because... We do. And I counsel daily and work with people daily who are going through what we would look at and say, that is some big stuff, right? It is not to diminish that at all, but it is to remind us that we are here as creative beings. We are here as God in form. We are the Christ nature, that Buddha nature, that Moses nature, to express in fullness and that that with, which is within us is so much greater than that which we are going through. And how do we remember that? We come together in community, come unity with 
unity. We come together to serve, to love, to remind each other. It's in our kindness. It's in our support. It's being able to stand, and the phrase is to stand in the gap, to be able to be present with someone when they're in the challenge to be present for yourself when you're in the midst of challenge, to have the courage to ask someone else to, to be present with you in the challenge, because that is what we are here for. We are here to love one another. You know, the phrase, God is love, isn't just a nice thing for a poster. It's actually, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, and it's not, like a noun, it's the action, the activity, the flow of love. The infinite presence of God is love. And what I know, and when I remind myself of this, it's the same thing in that I read in Course in Miracles, that which is missing in any situation, like love, like peace, is missing because I haven't brought it. I haven't brought it. Who's in charge here? Who's in charge here? I'm in charge here. Thomas Troward wrote, that our soul itself is a reflection and image of the infinite spirit. Ooh, your soul, your soul itself is a reflection and image of the infinite spirit. So are we one with and of God or will we random creations? Are we just random things that happen? Do we come from a separate power? You know, we can move through our lives and see lots of evidence that's going to make us think we are random, that life is random, that there is no rhyme or reason. And yet from the spiritual perspective, that's not the capital R reality of life itself. That is not the truth. There is one universal whole which encompasses all of it. It contains all of itself and there is no separation from this eternal one. Within each of us lies the soul of the whole. You know, we talk often about Rumi, where we are not a single drop in the ocean. We are that ocean. We are that ocean in a drop, right? We are everything that is true about that ocean of love, of possibility, of creation, of life, of energy, of expansion, of expression, of evolution. That's who we are. We're not separate from that. Hmm. We take back our infinite spiritual capacity to live when we ask the question, who's in charge here? We take it back. You know, we, we teach aff affirmative I am statements here all the time, and there's a reason for that. I am, the words I am, that's the metaphysical name, the metaphysical name of your spiritual self. I am, that is your name as distinguished from the human self. And so we teach this knowing ourselves from that I am so that we can live from limitless spiritual self-knowing. When we identify ourselves as and with that I am, we, are, we identify ourselves as who we are, both in our inner orientation and our outer demonstration. So how do you want to orient your life? Do you want to orient it around knowing and poise and peace? Or around the fear that you see, the disharmony, the limitation? You know, mindfully and consciously, identifying myself as I am is the way in which I tell myself to wake up. Wake up. You know, we talk a lot about, in fact, we just had the first part of the Emma Curtis Hopkins class, and she said, be very aware of any phrase you speak or anything you think that, has, that begins with the words, I am, because whatever you follow that is your name and nature. You identify that as your name and nature. It creates identity, and your imagination and your power your focus and your energy all goes there. So how many times during the day are you saying things like, I am tired, I am frustrated, I am angry? You know, the most powerful words you and I can ever use are I am. There is this collective mystical energy around it because it is the deepest, oldest, ancient name for one, for God, for you and for me. I am. It is the I 
am. So whenever we are saying that I am, we are actually engaging with the infinite presence of the universe. We are engaging with the power of the universe. It's sort of like we say I am and this energy field over here goes, oh, oh, I'm on call now. I'm awake now. Here I come and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate now through you. We are sourced and supplied when we, and, and if we are sourced and supplied and constant and remember to reflect this truth about God, then we have the power to create by simply using that I am. You know, Eckhart Tolle wrote, and I can't pronounce that one either, you find peace not by rearranging the circumstances of your life, but by realizing who you are at the deepest level. So forget about those deck chairs on the Titanic. They're going down with the ship. Just let them go. Focus on who's in charge here. You know, Maya Angelou wrote this, and I love this quote. My mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do so with some passion, some compassion, humor, and some style. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Ah, who's in charge here? So now let's come into the awareness that there is one power and one presence. It's your life. It's my life. It is life now. And then ask yourself the question, who's in charge here? Because you might see that, you might believe that chaos is in charge out here, but really what we care about is that you stay in your lane, your divine spiritual lane, and you come back and you say, who's in charge here? Who's in charge here? I am, right? So I'm going to have you do that horrible thing that ministers have you do, and you're going to repeat some phrases, okay? So just play along. We'll have some lovely parting gifts for you. I am in charge of my own thinking and believing. I am in charge of my own thinking and believing. I am a creation of spirit. I am a creation of spirit. I am empowered to create my life. I am empowered to create my life. I am God's celebration of itself. I am God's celebration of itself. And so it is, and so are you. Amen. Yeah, you can keep repeating, but I'm done. So. <laughs> all righty. So let's pray. Oh, let's take all of this into consciousness. Thank you, by the way. And let's... Oh, let's breathe ourselves into that deep awareness of God because our breath is that, that imminent connection with God. It is the way that we remember and that we know. And it is God's most imminent way of connecting with us, of, of enlivening us, of bringing us into fullness. We are the fullness of life itself and expression. So together, I invite you to recognize that this infinity is fully, fully, fully orbed. That God is all there is. Whether we are able to intellectually embrace it or not, God is all there is. God is the presence and the power. God is all there is. God is that which created and sustains the planets in their orbits. It is both creator and created, and it is that which has brought each of us here for a unique celebration of itself and I know that I am that unique celebration of God and God looks upon me from the inside and says boy she sure is unique and I know that you each each of us here each of us on this planet that we are each unique expressions of God and that presence within says yep they are divine and unique each of us possessing spiritual DNA that cannot be replicated, can never be repeated, and is here for a greater, wonderful purpose. Each of us, as the I am, that I am, that power and presence. So we know and we ask ourselves from the very depths of being, who's in charge here? And we know that it is that divine self that we really truly are. We are the divine in expression. Each of us participating in the wholeness, in the joy, in the possibility, in the humor, in the whimsy, in the delight, and yes, the healing, and yes, the abundance, and yes, the love, and the relationships that work. Yes, all of it. 
because that is the harmony of God. That is that same harmony that keeps the planets in their orbits. That is what you and I, what each of us right here and now, are here to express. And we recognize that and we allow that idea to sink deep into our inner being so that we can grok it on every level. And we can live from that knowing, live from that awareness, and live as that celebration of God. We are the celebration of life itself. How wonderful to know that we have the power to choose and to choose again and to choose again and to always keep creating from our choice to remember, I am, I am, I am in charge here. And we remember as we mm, surrender into this wonderful idea, this magnificence that God is all there is, that surrender isn't about mm, giving up. Surrender is opening up. So it is a divine surrender. We open up. We open up into this great knowing that no matter what has come before this moment, this moment right here is where all of the power and the presence is fully, fully involved, engaged, and orbed, and active. So we use this moment from which to create. We use this moment from which to create. We use this moment because this is that now moment. So in this now moment, I know for each of us that we are the wholeness of God. We are the life of God. We are the love of God. And we look beyond anything that might be in the out there world knowing that we are greater than that. We are the I am, that I am, that I am, that I am, that continually, continually seeks to expand, express, and celebrate. So I know that in this love, in this knowing, we embrace everyone in our family and on this planet. I know that we are a blessing to those around us. And I know that just as we move out into the world, we are a blessing to the world. We bless this church. We bless all churches, all paths to God, all, all ashrams, all mosques, all temples, all synagogues, all paths to God, because we are one with the one. And we celebrate that. And we celebrate it deeply. And we allow it to celebrate us. How wonderful to know that. We bless all of those who we have thought we're in opposition, knowing that we are one. And it is in our oneness, it is in our blessing of them that we call forth the divine experience of God. I am grateful that we know this. I am so grateful and I know that this is simply a recognition of the way it is. We don't have to manipulate. We don't have to get our bulldozers out and move treatments. We just let them be because we are recognizing the consciousness of God in, as, and through every aspect of being, my being, everyone's being, the being of life itself, all humanity, you, me, all, he, she, it, child, every, every being on this planet as an expression of God. How wonderful to know that. So I release this word into law and I invite you to say with me, and so it is. Amen. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm
Yeah. I want to just add something. If you find yourself, you have an area in your life where you're feeling stuck and you can't seem to process through it, whether it's a physical stuckness, if that's a word, or an emotional, you know what will help to process it through? Dancing and moving. This is how we move through and let this power and presence move through us is by physical movement. So get up and dance when she sings because it's powerful and, and it will heal you. It will lift you to another place. It's where the endorphins begin to roll, right? Do they roll? They do now. Anyway, so ah, now is when we accept your tithes and love offerings. And so I want to invite you to take that offering or that idea, that giving, and we're going to tell you ways to give in a little bit later. And just hold it in your hand and hold it to your heart. And would you say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Woo, yes. Okay, come on up. We have announcements. Well, thank you, thank you. I better be on time. I'll get fired or I'll get a warning notice. <laughs> oh, thank you so much um, for everything. Um, we make it easy for you to give donations for our church. You may text the word give to the uh, number um, in your bulletin or the use the little QR code that's in your program, or just simply text nhcrs.org forward slash give. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service here in the sanctuary as well as on Zoom. And our Wednesday evening service uh, next Wednesday with Reverend Sidney Steen will begin as, um, with meditation at 6.50 p.m. and the service will begin at 7 p.m. Please join Reverend Sidney next week when she shares the topic, I find my pony. Now what? <laughs> Living <laughs> on my pony. <laughs> well, we know she'll be here. <laughs> Speaking of which, thank you, Margaret Owen and Sam, for your beautiful music tonight. I believe your music is available on iTunes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Living a Course in Miracles, this group facilitated by our illustrious practitioner, Jeannie Laporte, meets tomorrow evening, that's Thursday, August 18th, from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m., and is on Zoom only, and all are welcome. You don't need to be a regular attendee. Drop-ins are more than welcome, and the link for that will be found on our website. 
There is still time to sign up for Dr. Mark's Abundance Workshop, and I have been taking it, and I've actually experienced lots of good abundance. So it, the last meeting will be this Monday, August 22nd, on Zoom only, and um, you learn how to expand your prosperity consciousness. Class meets from 6.30 to 8 p.m., and it is the fastest 90 minutes you will have all day long. And it's based on the book uh, Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. The book is available in the bookstore. And the cost is simply responsible giving. And that's real abundance consciousness. And come and walk the labyrinth. Come one, come all, and support your soul in the peace and blessings of the labyrinth walk. Uh, it will start this Friday evening, August 19th at 6.30 p.m. for orientation and explanation. It says for first-time walkers, but let me tell you something. I go to the explanation every time we have it. And it's been, I think, three years since we've done this, and I learn something every time I go. I hear it uh, more deeply. I just It resonates with me. It makes sense, and it's just like, oh, I didn't realize that. It's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. So I encourage you to come and listen to the intro and then come in and do the walk, which will be from 7 to 9 p.m. Friday evening. And then again, uh, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., we'll have the healing walk and we'll also have a prayer room in the Mommy and Me room. And you're drop, welcome to drop in a prayer or healing room. There'll be a practitioner on vigil in there. It's a silent prayer. And if you have nothing to heal, please, please come and pray for our planet and pray for our world leaders. Your prayer is so deeply appreciated. There will also be a, a, um, a prayer box where you can just drop in your prayers as well. But your prayers are deeply appreciated, and it really helps talk, raise the abundant consciousness of peace and well-being and water for our planet where we need it. Okay. And the Love and Kindness Ministry, uh, Lunch in the Park, uh, will be serving people, the homeless, uh, this Sunday from 12.30 p.m. to support the ministry. Contact uh, Gilda Gomez through our website. She's been doing this for a long time. It's a real heartfelt ministry. Practitioner graduation, yahoo! is going to be this Sunday, August 21st at 1.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Our four magnificent North Hollywood Church of Religious Science members have successfully completed and passed their uh, practitioner training. Please come and support and join in the celebration, and I will be the biggest cheer for them all. Our Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services is available. And our Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. All are welcome, and drop-ins are absolutely always welcome. Um, please visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. My foot. So I think we're going to do the benediction a little differently. I'm, I am just moved to do what Dr. Mark does on Sundays because I just love it so much. So I would ask you all to just simply repeat after me and take this into your heart. I am at home in the heart of God. I am home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. So on your way out, give a thank you to all of our people who are showing up to help us on tech. We have people at home holding vigil. We have people here just giving so much love. And just thank them all. And let's hear you one more time, please. <laughs> yes.